I don't like being kept in the dark, Captain. I don't like people making decisions about my future. I don't like putting my life in the hands of a Turian, sir. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. And here we are. This is Hill. And this is Mass Effect. This is by far my favorite game, trilogy, series in, in the history of gaming. And I'm glad, excited to be bringing this to my channel and to you so you can share the experience with me. Um, it has been years, many years since I've played Mass Effect. Um, and when I first played the game, it was on the Xbox 360. We're here now on the PC. And we have installed two mods. One is um, a texture mod. And I don't know how people pronounce that acronym, but um, the mod is the Mass Effect Updated Improved Texture Mod. M Mutum? I don't know. That's... Uh, heard some people try to give it a name but that's what it is that, that's it all spelled out so we have the texture mod which makes this aged game look really good you know in, in 2018 and uh, we have the Xbox 360 controller mod installed on the PC because I am a horrible PC gamer as far as keyboard and mouse it's just something that I have never mastered so I finally got myself comfortable so I can play Mass Effect. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that bit of history with you. I am going to be um, dropping tips as I play through for anybody that may be playing this game for the first time. So hopefully you'll find something useful out of this Let's Play. And um, let's just go ahead and get started. going to start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Connect to database. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. All right, we are going to create a new character. Move this cursor out of the way here. Custom mail. Please log in to access your profile. Now the um, mod that I'm using for the controller doesn't seem to support everything, so I am having to use the keyboard every now and then. All right, so our character is going to be named Sindarius Shepard, and he'll go by a nickname, which I will reveal later on. Warning, data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Reconstructing profile. Confirm pre-service history. All right, we're gonna go with Earthborn. You were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth. I bet you didn't know that's how you pronounced it. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting in the Alliance military when you turned 18. Confirm psychological profile. Ruthless. That's really the funnest way to play Mass Effect. Um, you know, being a war hero and a paragon and all that kind of stuff may make you feel good inside from time to time, but if you want to be entertained, you might be looking for laughs unfortunately at other people's expense ruthless is the way to go so throughout your military career you have held fast to one basic rule get the job done you've been called cold calculating and brutal your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you but when failure is not an option 
The military always goes to you first. Confirm military specialization. All right, here's our first tip. If you are playing Mass Effect for the first time, it is recommended that you play as a soldier. The reason for that is that you will, you know, I will be showing you shortly, you can unlock, I guess, specializations, weapon specializations, such as assault rifle, shotgun, and sniper rifle. Because these other classes, with the exception of infiltrator, do not have weapon specializations. So, if you're playing, let's say, as an engineer, see that pistol in his hand? That's all that you're going to be able to use throughout your playthrough. And not to say that the pistol is any slouch. That is a very viable option for playing the entire game. Now, on higher levels, I've never played this on Insanity. I don't know about using a pistol, but pistols are pretty incredible in this game. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, unlocking these specializations. Um, power cooldowns are a little long in this game, so it, it's a little bit difficult if you just wanted to use your powers to get through. And I did play years ago on this PC. I did play as the soldier. So I have unlocked the, the weapon specializations, and I am going to use those with my character. I am going to go with an adept. Um, adepts are biotic specialists. Through upgradable implants, they can use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, and disable or throw enemies. Adepts can only use light armor and can only receive weapons training with pistols. Alright, so here are the specializations that I have unlocked from playing as a soldier, shotguns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. I also played as a engineer, so I unlocked damping, electronics, and decryption. I could use any of these, but I want to go with assault rifle for this adept. Confirm facial identification. Alright, we are going to change our appearance away from the uh, iconic default John Shepard. And let's go through these presets. This was the one. You have to be careful of the cheekbones in this game. As you can see, these cheekbones are jutting out a little bit. They can be really sharp and harsh looking. I'm going to move this down to the middle to reduce the sharpness. The gauntness of the cheek, I'm going to put a little more meat there. Reduce the size of the ears. good and the the thing that really amazed me about Mass Effect was it was an opportunity for me to create a person of color to create a, a hero that was going out to save the galaxy from this insurmountable threat because I'm I'm an older gamer and you know I didn't have role models that looked like me when I was growing up so this was just thrilling for me to be able to create a character like this. I wish we could get uh, vivid blue eyes like these green eyes. I wish you could get blue eyes just as vivid. Looks like purple is probably as vivid as it gets, so we'll go ahead with this. And you may be wondering why I'm choosing blue eyes for a African-American character, and the reason for this is that he is an adept, and he's so biotic that his eyes are blue. And I want to have the big wide eyes, yeah. 
so you can see the the height the, the height so that you can see the the blueness of the eyes Decent enough. have to be careful of the uh, mouth depth also because if it's mouth is sticking out too far it kind of looks like a duck bill and you don't want that all right I think we got that corrected all right we got our nose hair Somebody you don't want to come across in a dark alley. All right, here we are. I think this is Sindarius Shepherd. Profile reconstruction complete. All right, so here we are with our Sindarius and his nickname that he will adopt later on is Singularis because he is going to master the singularity ability as we play through the game. So he's earthborn, he's ruthless, and he's adept. Let's go. Identification confirmed. All right, we're playing on normal difficulty for starters. Uh, auto leveling up is off. I will do that manually. Target is normal. I'm going to use the squad power usage defense only so that hopefully I can direct my squad to use their powers as needed for offensive purposes. Okay, let's continue. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn? No record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets. Learned to look out for himself. He got most of his unit killed on Torfin. He gets the job done. No matter what the cost. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call.
first prime relays in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander? We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. <laughs> Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. That's enough. You're soldiers. Act like it. Sorry, Commander. Joker. Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, <laughs> Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Great. You pissed the Captain off, and now I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The Captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Mm. Alright, so here we are with our... Cinderius Shepard with his biotic blue eyes. Let's see, I think we can go over here and talk to Caden. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. Okay. Thought maybe I could get some points or something for that. I'm telling you, I just saw him. He marked by like he was on a mission. But I have to say, the, the characterization, the story, I mean, Mass Effect was just at the top of its game back in the day. It's a shame that, you know, it's just fallen so far, but wow. It's just a pleasure, though, to be playing this again. And, you know, the reason that I'm able to play this again after the disastrous ending of Mass Effect 3, I mean, I, it, it just broke my heart to, you know, watch Commander Shepard die. I mean, spoiler alert if you, you know, haven't played all three games. But it just it was just too heart wrenching to continue to play the game over and over again just to watch him die. So I think I only played Mass Effect 3 maybe two and a half times, three times maybe. Just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And I don't know what decision making, you know, they, they, they had here. You know, talking about this was art and they could have any kind of ending that they wanted. But you know, the real bottom line is that this is a business and it behooves them to make a game that people want to continue to play over and over again. And I just couldn't do it. I mean, you know, just to, the limited choices that you had in the third game and all of them leading to death, except for, you know, there was some doubt in one of the options, but it, it just wasn't good enough. It just didn't give you enough hope. But the reason I'm back 
the reason I'm able to play Mass Effect again is the modding community. I can't thank you guys enough. Because for Mass Effect 3, someone made a mod, the, the Happy Ending mod, and I did install that in my version of Mass Effect 3. So, no more Catalyst, and Shepard gets to live. So, I am thrilled to be able to play this game again. All right, let's continue on. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the Captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. So you see what family can do to you? This man hates aliens because of his family. And some aliens are nice people. Nihilus is no ordinary Turian. You've got that right, Commander. We're an Alliance vessel, human military. But Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated Special Forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting-edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper. Less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious the shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Info's on a need-to-know basis, Presley. Just follow the orders you're given. Understood, Commander. <laughs> All right, well, we didn't get any renegade points for that. Tried, didn't work. That's crazy. There's a lot of gossip going on on this ship. All right, what, what are you two hens talking about? What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But... When I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those CSEC grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. 
The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the Council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. What you did on Torfin, that's what they're looking for. Success at any cost, ruthless efficiency, show no mercy. Sounds like my kind of job. This is all just wild speculation. The Spectres aren't interested in recruiting humans, no matter how capable. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on Torfin. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. All right, no renegade there either. All right. Let's go. And I am thoroughly impressed with these textures. I mean, this really does make the game look incredible and shaves off years of age. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I'm a marine, not some tourist on vacation. It's more than just a tourist destination, isn't it, Shepard? Eden Prime is a symbol of your people. A perfect little world on the edges of your territory. Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Are you trying to scare me, Spectre? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. I don't like being kept in the dark, Captain. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. We can handle this on our own. Unless something goes wrong. There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. Since when do we answer to the Spectres? You're smart enough to know how things work, Commander. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. A grim business, but you got the job done. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. 
I only care that you can do the job. I don't like people making decisions about my future. This isn't about you, Shepard. Humanity needs this. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology. Even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden- Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. It just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold at 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly, without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Gary. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nyland, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. I don't like putting my life in the hands of a Turian, sir. Nihilus is on our side. He wants you in this victim, and he wants that beat. 
We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. We're going to end this place got hit hard, Commander. the recording here, and we will continue with more of the original Mass Effect. This is Hill, and I'm out.